died instantaneously. No matter how frustrating life is, suicide should never be an option. Why? Because he didn't come to the earth even with boxers, pants. He became naked. So why? Because you lost a contract. You want to kill yourself? Some of us who cannot stand here and begin, begin telling us what you have lost for 2022 alone. Because if I stand here and maybe mention it, you'll be thinking, ah, this man, right? God is very interested in sharing his dominion with his own. As a matter of fact, God specializes in sharing dominions. He specializes in sharing dominion. After you are finished fighting, will they blow your mouth? Yes. What about your eye? Yes, Sometimes even the winner goes with serious. What matters there is that the belt is on your shoulder. What matters is not the pain. There is not the pain. What matters to a pregnant woman is not the pain of labor. It is the, the cry of the child that comes after the pain. As a police officer, if you engage in a, you engage in a, what, what do they call it? Special duty. And then maybe they are robbing a particular bank. And then you were spotted to kill five of the hand robbers. What happens to you instantaneously? When I come back, they will promote me. The moment they see that this man is the one who killed those guys. Even if he kills two or even one, this place must change. The rank here must change. It simply means there is a reward for every battle you win, including depression. If you win war against depression, God adds a a, a rank to you. <laughs> the Lord Come on, ladies and gentlemen, can I please, uh, can I please beck on on you to be somebody's strength? Be somebody's inspiration. Be the reason why someone will still push on. Allow your life to favor somebody. Don't live a life of selfishness and self-centeredness. The greatest and richest life on earth is to live for others. Live for others. Live for others. Jesus lived for others. It is from him we have atonement. From him we have redemption. From him we, have, we can boast of salvation. It is even because of Jesus that we can gather in a place like this. In case you don't know, life would be very tough. Life would be a war zone, but not for the Bible. But not for the scripture. I know some of my sons, like this son of mine now. He'll be carrying AK-47. I have sons who, if not for this gospel, I'm preaching to them. They'll be on the street. So it is the glory of Jesus that is his pain could bring people into conscience. His pain, his travail, his agony. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, for he was wounded for a transgression. He was bruised for iniquity. For the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And that by his stripes, the chastisement of our peace. So the reason why we have peace is because he was bruised and he was, he was brutalized. Ladies and gentlemen, 2,000 years ago, that man was taken to the cross. 
he was taken he was beaten he was treated as he was treated like 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 a criminal he was dealt with the bible said they even spewed on him they spewed on him and kicked him with their legs they took him to the cross not many days after they took him down to the tomb right in that tomb they opened the tomb the moment he breathed the last breath the bible said they began jubilating and celebrating they began jubilating and celebrating little did they know that a man who dies in purpose has not died yet a woman who dies in purpose is still alive it is purpose that immortalizes us it is purpose that keeps us you know alive on the earth even after our departure you don't die when you die in purpose every influence over your life to separate you from your god-given purpose and destiny in the name that is above every other name i cause that influence to be crushed by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus how many times how many times will i tell you that no, no pain, no gain. You have, to, you have to understand pain before you swim in gain. You have to partake of pain before you distribute gain. God will not trust you until he sees some scars on your body. He won't trust you. He won't believe in you. Two years ago, they locked him up. The Bible said when they took him into that place, when they got to Golgotha, they killed him. Right there, the man breathed the last breath. They carried him and took him to the tomb, threw him into the tomb, closed the tomb. And then they went and began celebrating, popping their champagne, thinking they had killed him. How many of you grew up in a village and you had maybe f f siblings or parents who, who did farming or yourself, maybe you've done farming before? How many of you know that it, it always looks as if you, you have lost a seed when you plant it into the ground? After one week, you don't see nothing. One week after, you, you're not seeing anything. Two weeks after, you begin seeing some 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 small small stuff coming out one two months after that thing you felt you are lost begin growing back to come back seeds don't die you can't kill a seed seeds don't die no matter the storms no, no matter the pain, seeds, seeds will always come back to rain. They will always come back to take their places on the earth. One corn, one seed of corn you planted gives you 500, 500 seeds of corns in a few months. They thought you've lost your life because you are sharing it to Jesus. They thought you lost your life because you're sharing it with Christ. They thought you lost your life because you render services to God. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Very soon. You won't just come out of the ground. 500. 500. Duplicates of you. Better version of you. You always think you have lost a seed when you plant it. But after some time, it comes out of the ground. We don't lose seeds when we plant them. Mark chapter 10, 40.
you, you have to be careful. Be careful how you plant your life. Be careful what you plant in your children. Because you see, some of you that your children are in school, are you aware that they are living, they are living the life of the seeds you planted in them? In your absence. There's no parent that knows his children. Especially when the child is in school. You can never know what that child can do. And what that child cannot do. Plant your seed well. The criteria to sitting with God in the heavenly places is first you must take the nature of a servant. Take the nature of a, of a humble man, a humble woman. Important places of the, on the, of the earth is owned by humble people. There are places only humble men and women can, can enter. And in case you don't know, humility doesn't make you smaller. That you're humble doesn't mean you're small. Value is value. The Lord said I should pray for a woman here. I don't know who you are. But in the name that is above every other name, thus saith the Lord. He said, your life shall bring a new name to the entire family where you came from. Yeah. Let, let me speak again. I know I'm not talking to everybody. I, I'm just talking to one woman here. I wouldn't know who you are. But I know that there are pressing issues around family. That is looking as though the family is about to crumble. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Before the end of this earth, you will give that family a name that the family will always depend on to rise. Can that amen echo like a believer's voice? Mark chapter 10, 40. Read. But to sit on my right hand. But to sit on my right hand. And on my left hand is not mine to give. Okay, can, can you read from verse 40, 38? But Jesus said unto them. Read from verse 37. They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit. One Grant unto the, us that we may sit. One on thy right hand. We want to sit. We want to sit in the heavenly places with you. The disciples came to Jesus and said, what can we do to sit in the heavenly places with you? And then Jesus looked at them. Can you go? 38. But Jesus said unto them, ye know not what he asks. Can he ask of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the... Come on, ask for my pain. If you want or no, ask for the formula. If what you're looking for is honor, ask for what? Ask for the formula. There is a formula. There is a formula. And the formula is pain. The formula is pain. Sao ofikla toke fikalan do borada. Senopeketuka. I have just one assignment on the earth. Never to misrepresent the place where I came from. To give them a name they never had. For my sake. For my sake. I mean for my sake. For my sake. Just the way they said for the sake of Christ. For Christ's sake. No. A time shall come in the family. They will say for, for, for Edward's sake. For, for your sake, sir. God can keep your family untouchable for your sake. God can keep your family in, in, in constant honor and inflow of power for your sake. Who wants to carry honor here? He said, ask of the cup that I drink. 
and be baptized and with be the baptized. baptism that I am baptized with. Yes. And they say, you know that baptism? It's not the water baptism. It's the impartation of persuasion to die. The impartation of that persuasion where Moses and Elijah appeared to him at Mount Transfiguration to tell him, don't think of going back. You have to die in the book of Matthew. Don't think of going back. You have to do what? Die. That's, that's an impartation. Sit down, sir. That's an impartation. You have to die. And then the guy, you know, proceeded. He said, be baptized of my baptism. Not John the Baptist. Because this, the baptism, we know it was John the Baptist. It was John's baptism he got baptized in, in the flesh. But the baptism he was talking about was referring to pain, the cup. Don't forget, he just talked about the cup. And at Mount Transfiguration, he stood and said, Lord, let this cup pass me by. So he was asking that if you're looking for pain, drink of my cup. Drink of my cup. It's a formula. Pain is a formula for greatness. It's a formula for greatness. It's a formula for ascension. A formula for increase. A formula to everlasting, everlasting oil. Everlasting oil. I have a few minutes to spend on this altar, but may I tell you, no pain for righteousness sake is a waste. No pain. More than 13 years ago when I went to do your family deliverance, Apostle. Did I go with my car? We chartered vehicle, is it not? More than 13 years ago. I did Apostle's family deliverance in that same Andoni side. Many people didn't see what was coming. About 15 years ago when you met me at the camp, was I this way? When we were fasting at that redeemed camp there, when they would be flinging me up and down, and nobody would want to pay attention to me, would you ever believe that this would come out? When they say seven days with Daddy Gio before convention, I'll be the first person to register. I will be the first person. I don't know why Osa has not, you know, seen my address. But I know God has the reason. Because if Osa comes via not eating, I should, be, I, I should be one of the... Now imagine since morning till now I've been on program. And I'm shouting on this altar. I should want the slump. But you see, whatever is done in purpose has a preserving age round about it. Purpose itself has what? A preserving age. A fence. You don't break into purpose. You don't kill men in their purpose. Men who are living a purposeful life. Sit down, son. Many people who saw me many years ago will say, ah, this guy, this guy, this guy should go and look for work before you go mad. Oh. It's madness coming up. Oh. I remember vividly one day I went to do morning cry at Marimbe's there. And I was shouting, repent! For thus the kingdom of God is coming. If you don't repent, you will die. That's my kind of evangelism those days. And then I heard one man say, no, 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 honey, leave me. Let me, let me show him. Let me show him. I, I turned only to see that the wife was dragging gone. This hunter's gone with the, the husband said, no, leave me. Let me. I said, who is this man bringing? <laughs> it was when I heard every morning you come here and be disturbed. Did you build house for me? 
I was like, I began walking two legs from. I said, Repent! You will die! Repent! <laughs> I didn't go there. That's the last day I did evangelism there. Around two days, evangelism is in the daytime. I wasn't born to die that way. I'm not Jesus, sir. I know my death. <laughs> if that man sees me today, he will never believe it. You see, because men improves in their purpose. There's no stagnation in purpose. Purpose will improve you. Purpose will bring you before kings. It may be gradual. It may be in process. But there is a place for fulfillment and manifestation. Nobody dies without accomplishment. When men find what they should die for, they should live and die in it. Nobody was born to die in marriage or die for marriage. Die for purpose, don't die for marriage. Death for marriage is a wasted death. In fact, the first wife of every man, every woman, the first wife and the first husband is his purpose. Your purpose is your first wife, your first husband. Embrace it even before you marry. Two thousand and sixteen, I was ministering in Zim, and while ministering, I finished ministering, and God, God used me to perform a particular miracle there in Zim, that's Zimbabwe. And a lady stood up and said, "Man of God, I want to sow a seed." So I said, "Proceed. What, what's the seed? Bring it to the altar." And then she went to her car and removed clothes. Well, she's she's a barrister. She's yeah, she's a lawyer. She removed her uh, stuff and the stuff she used to put on her head and all of those things. She kept it on, on her chair and then went directly to the altar and dropped the car key. I thought it was one of these, maybe all this uh, Paco cow. So after service, the man of God brought the key to me and said, this was given to you as a gift. That part of the country, whatever they keep on the altar is for the guest speaker. The church has no right over it. That's how Madagascar is. When you're in Madagascar, if they come and drop even 100 million naira on the altar, the church doesn't have a right over it. It belongs to the guest speaker. Whoever is on that altar. Even if it is a girl singing. So they gave that key to me. So I said, where is the car? They said, it's outside. When I got to see the car, I stood by the car and tears began running down my eyes. You know what came into my mind? The fact that my parents were arrested for peanuts. That my mom and dad saw police station for the first time for money that is not up to 5,000 5, naira. Then I looked back to where I was coming from. I said, wow, so purpose is a vehicle. It's a vehicle that conveys you to your fulfillment. I looked at myself. I looked at the past. Give me your right hand. I don't care how struggling it is right now. How tormenting it is right now. But in the name that is above every other name, you will bring your family to the place of glory. Amen. Father, to the ones you know you're speaking to here, I know you have families here. I know you have sons here. You have daughters here. You have people who believe in your name, who believe in your unfailing love. Please, Lord, I bring them before you this night. Bring them before the earth. Surprise them, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Then the man of God asked her, what's going on? I wiped my tears. 
I said, there is somebody I would have wanted to see my today. But she is not alive to see it. I said, I'm pained. He began consoling me. He said, but who is this person? Your wife? I said, no. He said, who? I said, my mother. He said, where is your mother? I said, I don't know. But I know she's with God. May those you love, may those you love not manifest. There are people that should live to see your manifestation. There are people that have gone through so much. They shouldn't die for Last scripture I will share. John chapter 15, 13. Greater love had no man than this. Greater love had no man than this. That a man should lay down his life for his friends. Excuse me. That's the greatest life to live for others. Because of you. There should be new houses in that family. Are you sure you're living for someone? And how, how can you live for someone when the least 500 naira can could bring problem between you and your your best friend you could quarrel you know you could have conflict with your best friend because of 500 naira and the bible says give your life you you can't give 500 naira is it your life you will give girl a contractor he was supposed to fly the girl to India. He began looking for money. Bank refused to borrow him. He came to me and pleaded. That day I just came down from abroad from a trip and there was I had small money. He said, Apostle, please, I just need 2.6 million naira. I said, you don't call it just. When are you paying back? He said, I will pay back between now and next month. I said, I cannot give you that amount now, but I can give you 950 first. And then we can see what, what can happen. We went to the bank. I brought out 950,000 naira I gave to this man. Because I saw the situation. I followed him to Meridian Hospital in Portacot. I saw the girl's situation. I was touched. I gave him 950. When I gave him that 950, we... He began looking for, he got some money from somewhere. I added another, is it 550 to that money, which turned 1.4, is it 1.4? No, 1.5 million naira. I waited. It flew the girl abroad. While the girl was there, he had contract and the money was paid. Over 50 million naira was paid into his company account. He began, he restarted the project that he stopped for a long time. Began building it again. I didn't bother talking to him because I know that as a man of God he is, I was feeling that he should know that he's supposed to pay back the money he borrowed. I waited. I didn't see the money. Three months, four months after, I didn't see the money. Five months, I didn't see the money. I had to ask him. He said, ah, Apostle, ah, I thought that one, you used it for offering, no? I said, offering house, sir. I still have the agreement you wrote. It's, it's in my house. I still have it. The paper agreement you wrote that you were going to refund back this money by so so time, so so time. The next time I asked him that money was when I came to you. I spent a whole lot of money I needed I needed cash. I called him again. That is after about two years plus. Called him again. Apostle, uh, what's happening? You, you, well, you're not talking. You're not, you, you've not, in fact, you've not said anything. You know what he asked? <laughs> I thought we are supposed to be, you're supposed to be a pastor. 
Is this how pastors talk? Do you know some people are just in your life to make you sin against God? That is the only reason why they are in your life is to push you to sin against God. Whatever you cannot forgo, don't borrow. It's a principle. I've dashed you. You need to pay me seed for that gift. Till today, have I gotten the money? A dime. I've not gotten from it. And guess what? I'm not looking forward to get it to getting it anytime anytime soon. I'm not even praying that God should touch his heart to come and give me. Because I know that whatsoever a man sow it. You repeat. I understand principles. I know scripture. I know the word of God. You, I, mean, I know God's word. I hear something now. Greater love had no man than this. That a man should lay down his life for his friends. What is your life on earth? What is the value of your life? If they put your life on the scale to checkmate the value, how will God look at that life? What will be the strength of that life in the eyes of God? How many people have you affected? How many lives have you touched? How can somebody be asking how when you have read it in the scripture that God is love? I said God is love and what does he have? So the life of God runs on what? On love. So if you don't have love, you're not, you're not, you can't be given the opportunity or the privilege to even see the kingdom, not to talk of seeing God. The life of God runs on love. So is the life of the church. A church without love cannot house God's presence. You can't keep the presence of God. You come, you come to look for me for prayers. I hope it's not after you would have messed up the heart of somebody. That I won't pray, I'm sick. I don't know what is wrong with me. What have you done with your life? How did you live your life? I want to stop praying for strangers and start praying for people who, I, who have heard my voice. The Bible said, my sheep knows my voice. Excuse me. Jesus is a family man. The church of Jesus is a family church. Elijah's of our time is a family. I wasn't joking when I said, it is impossible for a young man, a young woman under my tutelage to die. I was not joking. 